the project that I'm working on now, the main project, is uh, where we're looking at moths and their emergence times as we go from in the city, an urban environment, all the way out to a more rural environment. And there are several questions that you can look at. One is the diversity of moths in these different locations. And sure enough, we've been finding that the diversity is much lower in an urban environment, in an urban forest on our campus, than it is out in the country. But the main question that we've been focusing on recently is trying to see whether, um, first of all, is it warmer in Birmingham than it is in an outlying area, which is consistent with this idea of an urban heat island. And secondly, um, does that urban heat island, if it exists, affect the phenology or the flight times of moths? So the, what we've been finding is that, sure enough, it's about, on average, one to one and a half degrees centigrade warmer in the city than it is out at a place called Turkey Creek Nature Preserve, which is about 30 or so kilometers away. So we've got an intermediate site at Ruffner Mountain Nature Preserve, another forested area. And at that intermediate site, the temperatures are about intermediate. It's kind of on the edge of the city of Birmingham. And, and most of this difference is because of nighttime temperatures. So what happens with heat islands is that uh, in the daytime, the temperatures are about the same because most of the temperature, the ambient temperature, is driven by um, incident solar radiation. So the sunlight is coming. But what happens at night is these cities have been absorbing the sunlight and this intense radiation all day long. The concrete, the buildings, um, the pavement, and all these things are absorbing this radiation. And then at night, they re-radiate it back out. So at night, Birmingham is, that's where the big difference happens. Birmingham is usually about one or so degrees warmer than it is out in a forested area um, away from the city. So what that's done to the moths is um, we've been doing this project for about three years. And what that's done to the moths is it makes the many species fly a little bit earlier in the urban environment than they do out at um, the more rural environment. And our thinking is that this is because moths are ectotherms, their, their metabolism, how fast they develop, when they emerge from the pupil stage, when eggs hatch, all these things, all these processes happen faster when they're warm. And because the city is slightly warmer, moths do their thing slightly faster. <clears throat> um, the magnitude of this difference is can be as little as three, maybe five days, and at some times we've found that the magnitude of the difference is a couple weeks. So why this might matter, why this has been interesting to us is because, first of all, this is a demonstration that um, urban environments are affecting not only the diversity of animals, like moths, but it's also affecting um, their activity times or their phenology. The second thing that's of interest is um, not all species respond the same way. And the reason why that's interesting is because that about one to one and a half degree temperature difference between the city and out in the country corresponds to one of the low estimates for how much um, the predictions are for how much the temperature is going to change globally in about the next um, 80 or so years. So one of the predictions is that global temperatures are going to rise about one and a half degrees or so centigrade or more. And so what we're able to do in looking, comparing at this, the city out to the country is mimicking some of the temperature changes that are predicted to happen over the next 80 or so years. And the advantage of that is you can go out and see, all right, let's study the moth communities in these areas. We can see and predict how um, some species are going to respond in terms of global warming over a much broader area than just so that's the second thing of interest. And the third thing is, um, because moths do so many different things in habitats, that if the phenology or the timing of when they're active is shifted a little bit, 
then this might have some ecological implications for how they interact with other species. So let me give you an example. Um, many moths, people don't really know that much about moths as pollinators, but many moths are likely to be pollinators, so they're going to come and visit a plant. If a plant is only open and available for being pollinated for 10 days, we'll say, and it responds very early, it, it shifts forward in an urban environment because it's warmer, but the moth doesn't respond at all, then there's going to be a mismatch between these two species, and moths won't be as good of pollinators for this plant. If the plant shifts forward a little bit, but the moth shifts backwards, which we've seen for some species, it's actually, it develops more slowly when it's warmer, then that mismatch can be really big. And the moth can actually kind of, if they're already matched up, the plant moves forward a little bit, the moth moves forward in its phenology a lot more, then again, you can get these mismatches. So moths are pollinators, they're it, as larvae as caterpillars, they're really important herbivores. They're a massive source of food for nestling birds. One of the estimates is something like 60 to 80 percent of what fledgling songbirds eat in the springtime is made up of caterpillars. So um, if they are gone or if their timing is just off a little bit and the birds don't respond to temperature that the caterpillars do, then that could mean a lot less food available to the, to the birds and to the fledglings. They're also really important decomposers. They're food for bats and lots of other species. So uh, their roles in ecosystems are pretty important. And the timing of when they do things for their different stages of their life histories, if that shifts and other parts don't shift the same way or in the same magnitude, then again, these mismatches might end up being important. And that's sort of the next step. We've seen that there are shifts for some species of moths and not for others. Um, so our question is going to be in the future, if these shifts are happening, how are they doing in terms of being good pollinators? Are they still as good of pollinators from the plant's perspective? Do they still get as much out of this interaction um, in an urban environment as they do in a relatively unaffected environment like agriculture?